In this lesson, we are going to use while loop to design a small guessing game. In this game, the player needs to guess the price of a product. If he can guess the actual price, he will win the game and the program will say, you have won. A player can have at most 5 attempts. If he can't guess the actual price in 5 attempts, he loses the game. And the game will say, you failed. So, let's start coding. We're starting with a variable, actual price. And the value is 10. That means, the price of the product is $10. Now declare another variable j and set it to 0. It is for the condition of the while loop. Now the while statement and the condition is j is less than 5. And after that, the colon. It means this loop will repeat for 5 times because 0 to less than 5 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means 5 iterations. Now up to this point, the program is fine. However, if someone who doesn't know what this code is about and try to understand it, he will have difficulty to figure out what this J is. He will have difficulties to find out why we are using 5 here. We should code in such a way that everyone understands. When someone reads our code, it should be as if he is reading a regular English script. Instead of J, let's write guess underscore count and declare another variable guess underscore limit and set it to 5. Then as the condition type guess count is less than guess limit. Now read this line. While guess count is less than guess limit. It is like plain English language. We can instantly understand what is happening here. Now according to our game logic we need to use the input function. This function will show a message to the user. It says, guess the price. I believe you remember that this function always returns a string. So we need to use int function to convert it to integer. Then store it in a variable named guess. Now, we are in the while loop and this is our condition. We have to increase the value of this guess count in every iteration. Remember how to do that? We can use augmented assignment operator. Now in every iteration, the guess count will increase by 1. If the guess is equal to the actual price. Remember this double equal symbol? It is the comparison operator. If it is true, that means if the guess is the actual price, then print yield 1. We are not done yet. Anyway, we are going to run this program to see if it works. And what else need to be done? Let's run it. Let's put an incorrect value here. We are having our second chance. Let's put 5 here. Another chance. This time I'm going to put the correct value, 10. We can see the program says, you have won. But it is asking for another input. Once the player wins the game, it should stop asking for new gaze, right? That means we need to terminate this while loop when this if condition is true.
We use break to immediately terminate the while loop when necessary. You can see the program is still running. Let's stop it and run it again. First, guessing some incorrect value. In the second attempt, let's guess the correct price, 10 USD. This time, as soon as we guess the correct price, the while loop terminates and it shows us the message you have won. Exactly what we wanted. Let's run this program for once again. This time, all five of our atoms will get incorrect values. After five atoms, the game is over. However, there is no message to notify the player about it. Let's modify our program a bit. So, we want our program to show you failed if someone fails to guess the correct price after five attempts. Let's try it in this way. After this while, that means out of this while loop block, print you failed. Let's run this program and see what happens. After five incorrect guess, we can see this message, you failed. It looks like everything is fine this time. Let's run the program again. This time I'm making a correct guess. So you have won and you failed. There is something wrong with our logic. Once the while loop is terminated, whatever is after it will be executed. What we actually need is this message will be printed only when the loop is completed. That means after five iterations. However, if this loop is terminated because of this break, then this message cannot be printed on the terminal window. It may sound complex, but the solution is actually pretty simple. We learned if else condition, remember? The while loop supports else. That means we can use an else block here. What it does, once the while loop is terminated because of this condition, this else block is activated. However, if the loop is forced to break, then this else block will not be activated. Let's print. You failed here and run this program. One incorrect guess, then a correct guess. We can see you have won. Let's try again. This time, all incorrect guess. The program says you failed. That means everything is working perfectly. This is how we can use while loop to write programs those require looping like our guessing game. That's all for this lesson. Let's go to the next one.